to my podcast series, The Best Thing to Design is You. This episode is called The Power of Color. Before I became an author and speaker, I was a designer through and through, and I still love design. And my attention in my design life has been directed towards color for a long time. I love what color can do to a space, how it changes a product, and seeing the effect it can have on people. I personally believe there's real power in color, but we're surrounded by it, so therefore we take it for granted, right? We really don't think about it too much. But did you know there's organizations globally who forecast colors for the future? Did you know that manufacturers join these groups and a palette is produced after their conferences? Now, manufacturers don't have to follow that palette, but it explains why all of a sudden the same color just kind of seems to be everywhere. So the palettes that are produced are not a Bible by any means, they're a guide. It helps manufacturers deliver products that are on track and timed correctly for the marketplace. To be honest, it's actually a fascinating process and it's really cool to be part of and see it work. And this is why you see things start to all happen in the marketplace, like I said, at once. But first they'll appear in fashion because it's the fastest turnaround. Then you'll notice it in homewares. And finally, in automotive. To go further, it starts at the high end and then moves down. So trendy colors don't show up straight away in automotive because we're kind of not ready for them. We need to see them in other places first and get used to them before we're prepared to spend, you know, twenty to $50,000 or more on a car. So you will see it in general, fashion, homewares, automotive. It makes sense, doesn't it? And to take it further, and this is what I think really matters, those forecast colors are all to do with social trends, things happening in the world. It's not just a bunch of designers sitting around thinking, I think it's going to be orange. No, there's reasons. There's reasons. And that's what's always interested me most is why a color comes into play. What is happening globally to drive this? And it can be anything from the Olympics to major social movements. Color actually reflects society's view of the world, and it comes out in the form of product. And this is why certain colors are suddenly in the marketplace, and they just seem to be right, where you just go, that new color just appeared, and I love it. You are ready for it, and there's a reason that it's there psychologically. So, for example, if we go back a bit to when the environmental movement really started to happen, soft browns and greens were everywhere. Almost any shade of green didn't matter. And it was all about cardboard packaging, leaves everywhere, organic-looking packaging, and natural colors. And it still is. But it started, and those colors were absolutely invaluable at that point in time. And it all started then because we were starting to pay much more attention to the environment. More recently, when we started to talk about the need to be vulnerable and softer and easier on each other, the overall palette became soft. Pastels, muted colors, they're everywhere. It's super interesting But what's more important is how a color affects you. That's what really interests me now. So let's just start with the fact that color is simply the sensation resulting from stimulation of the retina by certain light waves, right? Some are longer and some are shorter. So naturally, when we view a color, humans feel that response. It stands to reason that the colors that you surround yourself with can make a big difference. I mean, have you ever had that experience where you're wearing a particular color and everyone tells you that that looks fantastic on you? Or you wear something bright and people just seem to respond differently, like, wow, you look so bright today. This is others reacting to you. And in that case, you've got the power to actually affect someone else. 
I mean, why do we think our kids go for the bright colored cupcakes? Not because kids just like bright colors, because it's super stimulating, right? There's a reason that they're drawn to that. They're energetic. They want that energy. Bright colors are just downright happy. I say all this because in difficult times, especially what we're all going through right now, we have to find ways to surround ourselves and our families with things that help us. And color can be one of those things. I want to explain one other aspect, though. Every color, kind of like people, all have a good side and a bad side. So not every color is amazing. Well, they are, but they've also got a downside. So you have to think about how you're using them. Red, for example, has the fastest wavelength. So it dilates the pupil and stimulates. So more light gets in. It's great, but too much of it can be overwhelming. Green does the opposite. Less light comes in, so we relax. This is part of the reason a drive in the country is so peaceful. But if you need to work, (laughs) maybe not so stimulating, right? Not too much green. Blue is safe and secure, but it can be a bit too safe and it can be a little boring sometimes. It needs things around it. Think about a navy suit or a navy anything for that matter. It needs a bit of white. It needs a bit of red and it changes everything. A little yellow goes a long way. It's happy. It's uplifting. A bright yellow touch somewhere in a room. Fantastic. Orange, happy and healthy. Again, just a touch though, only an accent. And it goes on. So if you're feeling a bit, you know, down and out, add a dash of yellow or orange somewhere. They're just happy. Maybe try putting one yellow gerber on your kid's homeschooling desk. Ta-da! Just something bright. It really does help. If you're feeling a bit weak and powerless, don't wear black that day. Try red. Think of what red lipstick does when you put it on or throw on a red scarf. It changes everything. If you're stressed or someone in your home is really stressed, that's when you need to add green. You know, stick some foliage in a, in a vase. Easy. Go to the park for a bit if you can. Feeling insecure? Maybe soak up a bit of blue for security. Put on your favorite denim jeans. Think about how that makes you feel. Or look at the sky. So this doesn't mean redesigning your home or your wardrobe or spending heaps of cash. Simple things will do the job. Flowers, a tie, a blouse, cushions. You probably already have everything. If you don't, a little something wouldn't hurt, even food. You know, a bowl of lemons does the same job. If you look around, I'm sure you can see opportunities to make adjustments if you need it. It's really easy to add color. The power of color and how it can change a mood is enormous and it's real. Once you become aware of it, it's easy and heaps of fun. Doesn't need to be a big deal. I think we can use color as a bit of a superpower. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want more information, go to DebraPasco.com.